<clears throat> hi good evening good afternoon all of you i hope all of you are doing good those in india happy monsoons the north side i think <clears throat> am i audible to all of you thank you <clears throat> okay let's begin with today's class i'll share my screen with the test and make sure that all of you are timing yourself and then posting your answers taking note of whatever discussion we are having the maximum things you should be writing down whatever you feel like is new for you you can forget you did not know you never used this way of solving you did not uh, think this way ever when you were solving so all those things need to be noted down all right so we'll begin with reading writing questions and here you have your first question on the screen you only have to give yourself two and a half minutes to solve this one and then post your answers in the chat box <clears throat> and then we'll have a discussion on each question two times so your time to solve this question starts now
I hope you can sh uh, see the screen now with the question. Everyone, thank you so much, Mandeep. <clears throat> okay, so you have one minute to put your answers and then we'll start the discussion. All right, are we done? Let's discuss this one. So this question says, our propensity to dash for regularities and to impose laws upon nature leads to the psychological phenomenon of dogmatic thinking or more generally dogmatic behavior. When we look at the grammar first, with two comes first form of verb and that verb should match with the word for as well. So this is a way you should analyze your um, sentences that you should look at what is written before the blank and you should also look at what is written after the blank don't miss any of the two things so when we use the word notice we don't say notice for irregularities we, we generally say that um, i have noticed this thing or have you noticed that thing so notice for is if you have a topic written after observe also does not come with for we generally use observe that i have observed this did you observe that so in this way, we use the word observe, uh, observe. And the word pay attention comes with two. A lot of times you might have heard from your teacher saying you need to pay attention to reorders. You need to pay attention to read alouds. So pay attention comes with two, not with four. But look out comes with four. Look out means to search for something. The sentence, first sentence was very long, but in a way they had given you the answer in the sentence itself that our propensity to search for irregularities, because this is something we are trying to find out. Our propensity to look out for irregularities and to impose laws upon nature leads to this phenomenon of dogmatic behavior. What is it now with the colon they have explained? Colon always means that now they are explaining whatever they have said in simple language, in more explanatory words, so that if you don't understand with the previous part, this explanation can help you understand that point of view. What do they mean? They said we expect regularities everywhere and attempt to find them even when there are none. So that means the previous topic was to find for regularities or irregularities. And that is why our answer is look out for them. Events which do not yield to, to these attempts, we dash to treat as a kind of background noise. Not many of you wrote the second answer correct. Some of you wrote, we incline to treat. But you only match the word with we incline to. You have to match it with the whole sentence. They say that um, 
events which do not yield to these attempts we dash to treat as a kind of background noise so those events which do not lead us to these attempts so we are inclined to treat otherwise a sentence we need a helping verb without a helping verb the sentence cannot be completed grammatically because the first part does not have a, a helping verb events which do not yield to these attempts we are inclined to treat them as background noise and we stick to our expectations even when they are inadequate like here we cannot simply write they inadequate because to complete this sentence we need a helping verb similarly in the previous part with the commas we needed a helping verb to complete it grammatically we stick to our expectations even when they are inadequate and we dash to accept defeat if we look at the options we don't use should and to together we say we should accept defeat we don't say we should to accept defeat we likely to like for likely to use we need helping verb before likely like we are likely to we were likely to it is likely to but we cannot say it likely to we likely to so without helping verb we cannot use the word likely we need to accept defeat and we ought to accept defeat both of them are grammatically right but this is a continuation of a sentence they say when we stick to our expectations even when they are inadequate inadequate is a negative word means we don't leave our expectations even when they are not complete they are inadequate and we dash to accept defeat that means we have to accept defeat it's not the need to accept defeat we have to because our expectations are inadequate so have to or must the better academic way of saying have or must is ought to that's the most academic version of have to or must to do something this dogmatism is to some extent necessary it is demanded by a situation which can only be dealt with by forcing our conjunctures dash the world so with forcing <coughs> forcing to the world forcing in from or upon you should always go with upon with forcing force upon the things especially when you are not talking about any physical thing like the world is not a physical thing then you will always use upon in that case moreover this dogmatism allows us to approach a good theory in stages by way of approximations if we accept defeat too easily we may prevent dash from finding that we are very nearly right so if we accept defeat we may prevent whom we may prevent us ourselves themselves or yourself so when we are talking about we as the pronoun the possessive pronoun of we is ourselves we ourselves we is used for our own self so these are the answers listen to them once again and then you can ask your questions if we have missed something so look out because look out comes with for the meaning of look out is to find things to search things and that was explained in the sentence itself the second one we needed a helping verb without which it won't be grammatically complete sentence so they say events which do not yield to these attempts we have to treat them so have we are we were any kind of helping verb is required to complete the sentence grammatically the third one um they say that our expectations are incomplete so there's no choice we have to accept defeat and the better academic version of have to is ought to the fourth one with forcing upon you will go with upon when you are um not talking about any physical thing like the world is an abstract thing not a pen pencil paper kind of thing so which can be dealt with by forcing upon the world and the last one when we is the pronoun the possessive pronoun for we is ourselves like for you is yourself for them is themselves similarly for we it's ourselves right any questions anybody <clears throat> in this particular question that depends neha if it's a physical thing then um we can say we need to apply our force on this object if it's an object we generally use on as the preposition 
but we cannot say force on the world because world is not a physical object in itself. Us is not the possessive pronoun of we, Zoya. That's what I'm explaining. For them, it's themselves. For you, it's yourself. And for we, it's ourselves. When you are talking about that you have to do something for yourself, then we don't use us because us is for whosoever is in the question. If there are five people sitting in a group, you, you'll say that, okay, I need to cook for all of us, right? So all of us or not includes only that particular person. So when you want to say that nobody can help us, we only have to do for our own self, then we use ourselves as the possessive pronoun. All right, the question number two on your screens, you have two and a half minutes to put your answers for this one.
all right should be done some of you have done very well good so this is the ability to detect and dash to the smell of a threat is a precondition of our and other mammals survival so they have used first form of verb we also need first form of verb and that verb should also match with the word to the ability to detect the ability to dash to the smell so react comes with to you need to react to this proposal can we say the ability to behave to the smell we don't behave if we smell something proceed is to go uh, like we say proceed ahead and perceive is to interpret to understand something so we don't interpret smells but yes we can react good or a bad way whenever there is a smell around so the ability to detect detect is to find and react to the smell of a threat is a precondition of mammals survival this is a complete sentence smell of a threat still we have a blank threat is a noun so we will need an adjective what kind of threat likely threat likely is not an adjective acceptable or unacceptable are not threats because no threat is acceptable threat means a negative thing and we don't accept negativities in our life potential threat is a possible thing potential means something that can be a threat to us and budding is a positive word budding is growing something which is growing in a positive manner then we use the word budding like we say he's a budding singer means he is not the perfectionist at this point of time but he is growing to become one so that is budding so we'll go with potential threat potential means which is possible to become a threat in some time using a novel technique we did the meaning of novel yesterday how many of you remember it what is the meaning of novel we did yesterday <clears throat> very good it's so a very common word to be used in blanks nowadays both in the context as well as in the options so remember it using a new technique researchers at this institute have been able to study what happens in the brain when the nervous system judges a smell to represent danger the study indicates that negative smells associated with unpleasantness or unease are processed earlier than positive smells and dash of physical avoidance response how to read sentences what is the subject of this sentence that negative smells this is the subject negative smells are processed earlier than positive smells this is one statement how to read the sentences with and is what i am trying to explain then you will read the subject again negative smells dash a physical avoidance response so when and is joining two pieces of sentences not just two words like in the first sentence and was connecting two verbs then it's fine but when and connects two parts of information then you have to read both the parts separately with the same subject so negative smells are processed earlier than positive smells one statement negative smells dash a physical avoidance response now you have to look into this sentence by just picking the second part so the noun is plural smells that means we need a verb without s so first of all you will eliminate if there is any word with s then this sentence is present tense so we don't need past tense we can eliminate anything which is past tense produced we need a verb negative smells dash of physical response we cannot say negative smells including a physical response because physical response is not a smell so we are left with only one option negative smells trigger a physical response trigger me this start they lead to a physical response so this is how you have to um eliminate your options which are based on different types of tenses singular verb plural verb continuous verb past form of verb first you need to understand the sentence structure and then it will be 100% sure that what you have selected is right 
the olfactory organ takes up about 5% of the human brain and enables us to distinguish between many million different smells. A large dash of these smells are associated with a threat to our health and survival. <clears throat> So a large dash of, so before of, we need a noun, dash of these smells. A large amount of smells. Can we quantify smells? No, we cannot. So these are 10 smells or 15 smells. Measure of smells, again, measure is length, breadth, height, meter, centimeter. We cannot do that with smells. A large capacity. Capacity is mostly used with liquid things, liter, milliliter kind of. So we can go with proportion because proportion is used for a number of um, ways we quantify things. Proportion can also be percentage. Proportion can also be how much smell is there. That is also proportion. So proportion does not mean that we actually have to quantify it in numbers. So out of the options, at least proportion is better. A large proportion of and proportion can also be understood as a large part of a large number of these smells are associated with a threat to our health and survival, such as of chemicals and rotten food. Odor signals reach the brain within 100 to 150 milliseconds after being inhaled through the nose. The dash of all living organisms depend on their ability to avoid danger and seek rewards. So after the, we need a noun. And let's see, continuance, duration, survival, which stand is not a noun. So the duration of living organisms, do we have durations? What is the duration of my life and your life? We don't use duration for human beings. Out of continuance and survival, survival is a better word to be used for living things. We don't say continuation of a human being. We say survival of a human being or living organism, be it animal, insect or human being. The survival depends upon how well we can avoid danger. Only then we can survive. So these are the answers. We react to smells. We don't behave or perceive means interpret smells. What kind of threat it is? Potential. Because budding is a positive word. Acceptable again is a positive word and likely is not a word that can describe a kind of smell. Third one was pretty easy that uh, we needed a verb without S in present tense. So we have only one option triggered. The fourth one, proportion of smells. This, this simply meant that if there are... Um, let's say we are having different smells, then out of them, maybe some of the smells. So that can be proportion because proportion doesn't mean we need to measure it or we need to quantify it. We can just say some of the, and some means proportion. And in the last one, the dash of living organisms. So survival is better. We don't say continuation of living, continuance or continuation of living things. Measure is for something which can be measured like length, breadth, height and uh, amount is when you quantify something in numbers like 10, 15, 20. That can be amount. All right, Mandeep. So third blank, because of a noun is plural, we need a verb without S. And because it's a fact that they are telling us, facts are always in simple present tense. So simple present option without S is only one trigger. Right, Zoya? Okay, so here you have your question number three on the screen. Two and a half minutes to post your answers for this one, please.
Okay, should be done. Please post your answers. So who told you, Suganya, that the struggle was temporary and not permanent? <clears throat> See, there are um, these kinds of questions coming up in the exam in which the language is not very relatable. It's kind of a thesis kind of language, a technical topic being explained which is not a, what a, not a routine topic, not an everyday uh, thing we understand. Whereas if we get something about global warming, it's very easy to understand. Terrorism, we, we do get those kind of topics as well. So if we get these kind of topics, which are a bit theoretical and not very practical in real life to understand, then the answers are very, very easy. Then you don't actually have to uh, interpret the meanings of the sentences and the words that they are using your answers are simply based on collocations which words go together very common phrases because they don't want you to understand what they are saying in those kind of questions like this one the struggle between the flesh and the spirit found an end in greek art complete sentence we need an adjective what kind of struggle between flesh and spirit countless is used with my plural thing at least countless can be struggles one struggle cannot be countless that's the first thing so always check singular plural the unlimited struggle or limited limited or unlimited is not a word to describe a struggle be it of any kind practical or theoretical temporary or permanent is not a struggle especially when they are talking about something flesh and spirit spirit abstract thing flesh is our body so we don't have temporary or permanent struggles with flesh and spirits in life. So we can simply say the endless struggle. Maybe they want to say that this was something which was, this uh, struggle was not ending and it found an end in Greek art that finally Greeks were able to solve this or stop this or put an end to it. So it can be the endless struggle. The Greek artists were unaware of it. They were spiritual materialists, never denying the importance of the body and ever seeing in the body a spiritual dash. So with A comes a noun and it should be a singular noun. So I need a singular noun here. So let's look at the options. If anything which is plural or anything, if it is not a noun, first of all, you should be eliminating that. Significance is a noun. All the words that end with A, N, C, E are nouns. E, N, C, E are nouns noteworthy who remember the meaning of noteworthy we did this yesterday we feel this was in the options as well this was in one of the contexts as well so we did noteworthy persons the examples were uh, steve jobs three examples were given right so we used it for People who were important, people who have done some significant work in their area, someone whom we cannot ignore or neglect, someone who is um, a role model for others, someone who is an example for others, right? So that is noteworthy. Noteworthy is an adjective. Noteworthy is not a noun. And then point is a noun. Now let's match it with the options. In the body, a dash. Do we have in the body a spiritual point? Do we have a spiritual point in our body? Do we have a spiritual consequence in our body? Consequence means negative result. And something which is spiritual should be positive, should not be negative. So what are we left with this? In the body, a spiritual importance. And this is possible. We have spiritual importances in our body. A lot of people believe in that. Mysticism on the whole was alien to the Greeks, thinkers as they were. Thought and mysticism never go well dash. And there is little symbolism in Greek art. So they don't want us to understand the meaning of mysticism here or how to relate thought and mysticism together. There are just a simple answer. There are two things and they say these two things never go well. And it's a very common answer to say that they don't go well together means these two things don't go together. They don't complement each other. We cannot say at once because at once is used in relation with time. 
closely or not closely they never go well closely so thought and mysticism are two abstract things at least we know this that thought is an abstract thing so there's nothing about closeness or not closeness here and combined nobody's telling us to combine our thought with mysticism a word whose meaning we don't even know so we can just say okay these two things don't go together and then there could be nothing less akin to the ways of symbolism than their beautiful normal humanity nor did decoration really interest the greeks in all their art they were dash with what they wanted to express not with the ways of expressing it so with work comes ed form its past story going on we cannot say engaging ing is not the uh, language of the text in all their art they were distracted with so distracted is a negative word distracted means they were not able to concentrate they were preoccupied with what they wanted to express they were brooding with brooding is also a negative word brooding means when you are engaged in a, a deep thought which is about a sad thing or a bad thing so that is brooding so we'll go with preoccupied we need past form they were preoccupied with what they wanted to express means all the greek people in all their art they were concerned with what they wanted to show not the way of showing it and lovely expression did not dash to them at all so it did comes first form of verb lovely expression did not interest to them interest doesn't come with to you can simply say in did not did not interest them at all fascinated cannot come because that's the first thing we discussed with did comes first form and fascinated is not first form did not appeal to them yes appeal and to is a collocation did not please to with again please we don't need to we, we can simply say did not please them at all so looking at the word written before the blank plus the word written after the blank when you are selecting your verb is very very important so these are the answers the endless struggle found an end in greek art the second one a spiritual dash a comes with singular noun and it should be in the body we don't have a spiritual point in the body consequence is a negative word we'll go with significance means spiritual importance in the body two things don't go well together because it's not something we can understand what they are saying the fourth one in all their art they were preoccupied preoccupied means the only thing that they had in their mind was this is what i want to show they were not interested in how to show it but they were more interested in what they wanted to express so they were preoccupied with this thought and lovely expressions like they said here that um, decoration did not interest them so lovely expressions means beauty did not please to them because Uh, did not appeal to them sorry because please and interest cannot come with two any confusions anyone in this second question so second uh, blank we needed a singular noun consequence is negative the sentence is not negative we don't have a spiritual point in the body so we are only left with spiritual significance and it makes sense we do have spiritual importances <laughs> in our body so third one is two things don't go well together that's it because we don't know how to combine them we don't know they were close or not and at once is used with respect to time try to note down manisha when we are having the explanation So you have your question number four on the screen. Two and a half minutes to post your answers for this one.
All right, let's start the discussion. This is how much bigger can the airplanes get? In the 1950s, they got the speed. In the 1980s, they become stealthy. Now they're getting smarter thanks to computer dash. Some of you have written computer technologies. Name some computer technologies, please. Give me an example of one computer technology. Do we have any examples of computer technologies? Computer technologies is nothing. Computer itself is a result of a technology. You have to always read the complete sentence. They are saying now they are getting smarter. So smarter things are getting smarter because of computer automation. Means AI, artificial intelligence is being included in things. Like we have autopilot modes nowadays. So that is computer automation. There are no computer technologies as such because of which airplanes are becoming smarter or there are no computer processes. Name some processes, no? If you're selecting an answer, ask yourself, if I'm writing computer processes, what do I mean by that? What is the meaning of computer process? Do I have any examples for computer processes or computer technologies? Do these things even exist, right? So these are the things you should write down because these are the ways of checking that what you are writing, what you are selecting is right or not. The change is quite huge from the four-seater to the A380 airplane. A dash, we are now trading, sorry, it dash, we are now trading speed for size as we build a new super jumbo jet. It is singular, we need a verb with S. It looks we are now trading. It seems we are now trading. So looks and seems are synonyms. Looks is a general word. Seems is a way we use the word looks in writing, in academic language. We say it seems. Seems means it looks like. It tends we are now. So tends is not this. Ten, tends is tendency for something to happen. So we'll go with it seems. Means it looks like. It looks like we are now trading speed for size as we build a new super jumbo jet with 555-seater A380, which will fly at the same speed of the Boeing 707. So sentence is complete, which will fly at the same speed. We just need uh, additional information. How much same is the speed? Almost the same speed already. Already is with respect to when you have finished something before time, then we say already still is used with something which started and it's still continuing like it is still raining means it has started while ago and the thing is still in continuation then we use still and yet means but still so when you are going contrast to something only then you can use yet so with the speed we can say almost because almost can be used with measure we can say almost the same money almost the same amount almost the same speed Introduced half a century ago, but with an dash capacity range and greater fuel economy. With an what kind of capacity? Capacity is a noun, so we need an adjective. What kind of capacity? And that should match with the vowel. So we need an answer starting with A, E, I, O, U. So we can eliminate repaired. Improved capacity is good because now we can accommodate more people. It cannot be upgrade. Upgrade is a noun form. If we want a verb form, it should be upgraded capacity. Upgrade itself is the noun. And enriching is not capacity. Enriching is used for quality, not for number. So we can go with improved capacity, improved range and greater fuel economy. Dash years down the line, we will come the truly larger model known to be known as 747X. So the two answers which are absolutely not possible are much years because much is used with non-countable things and we can definitely count years. And lesser is V2, second form of verb. It is only used with Dan. Second forms are only used when we are using Dan means when we are making a comparison. Now, the difference between a few and few is few means some and a few means not many. 
this is also a very common uh, blank that comes in the exam. So dash years down the line, what do you want to say? Some years down the line or you want to say not many years down the line will come the truly larger model. So it should be a few. Means we actually wanted to say that it's not going to be long that we are going to get even better version. We cannot say some years because some years can be 20 as well. Then what is the point of writing it? Some years can be 25 years as well. So we want to say it won't take many years that we are going to get a better, a more improved version. So that will be a few years down the line will come the truly larger model. Right? These are the answers. Any conclusions, anybody? The first one is computer automation because of things getting smarter is because of automation only. Then it looks like means it seems tens is used when you want to say tendency of something. Not when you when something is seeming, when something is very clear is in front of you. Third one almost can come with speed, almost can come with quantity. Already is when you complete something before the deadline. Still is continuation of something and yet is com uh, contrast of something. And then the fourth one with an, we need an um, adjective starting with the vowel. So we'll go with improved capacity because improved means in increase also. Upgrade is a noun form. We need upgraded capacities, right? But not upgrade capacity. Enriching is for quality, not for quantity things. And dash years, much is used for uncountable. Lesser is used for comparison. We'll say not many years. Means they wanted to say it's not going to be longer. A and then yeah. no, Isaac. A few doesn't mean A is singular. A few and few are used with the same sense. It's just the difference that I have told. A here does not uh, signify singular or plural. And moreover, even if it does, the noun written after that is few. So a will be with few. Because few means more than one. So a few years. A few means not many. A few doesn't mean one. That's why I told you the first thing, write down the meaning of a few and write down the meaning of few. Note down the difference between few and a few. This generally comes in the exam. Rule three, which rule three Neha and where is it applied? A comes before the, that is a rule of reorders, Neha. It has nothing to do with blanks. A coming before the is a rule of reorders. <coughs> All right. Okay, so the last question for reading, writing blanks for today. Number five, you have two and a half minutes to post your answers, please.
All right, are we done? Good, well done. This is a game of strategy is a situation in which two or more players make choices dash available alternatives. So people make choices between is only for two options. Out of the alternatives is fine. Among the alternatives is also fine. Through is used when you have a method written after. A method or a way or a process is when we use the word through. And those who are not writing these things because they feel their answer is out of or among and their answer is right and they have nothing to do with where is through used, start writing these things. So the right answer is See, out of and among can be used interchangeably. They are used mostly in the same situation. So you can go with among here because among also means when you have more than two options and you have to choose out of them, you can go with among. Make choices. Among the among means you have to make choices from the alternatives available. The totality of choices dash the outcomes of the game. So what is the noun of the sentence? The noun of the sentence is always the word written before of and you always have to check whether that word is singular or plural before you finalize your verb as the answer. So before of the word is totality. That's a singular noun. That means we need a verb with S. So let's see how many we have. We have two options with S, determines and managers. So the totality of choices dash the outcomes so the choices, <coughs> the total number of choices, they don't manage the outcomes. They determine the outcomes. Means whatever choice we make, it will determine what outcome we are going to get or what outcome comes of the game. Whether we lose or we win, it will be determined based on the choices we have made. So totality is singular. We need a verb with S. Now there can be people who have selected their answer without S based on the word choices. So that means there is a thing. There is a learning for you to note down here that on which word depends your verb. Your verb depends on the noun and noun is the word written before of. These are the common um, bases of blanks that come in the exam. The most common ones. 60% of your blanks in the exams come on these rules, singular, plural, positive, negative, this um, general academic, past, present. So 60% blanks are just these things. And it is assumed that the rank order of preferences for the outcomes is different for different players. Thus, the interests of the players are generally in conflict. Dash these interests are opposed or only partially opposed. It depends on the type of the game. So with or, we use whether or and either or. So let's see if we have those in the options. Yes, we have both of them. We have either as well. We have whether as well. So what is the difference? Either is used when you have to make a choice. Only then the decision will change. So when you say either um, tea or coffee, so that means you can select one of them and the result will vary. With If you select tea, there will be a different result. If there will be, if you select coffee, there will be a different result. And whether and or uh, is used when it, do, it is not required for you to make the choice because it really doesn't depend on your choice. So they say the answer here is whether because they say it depends on the type of the game. It doesn't depend upon opposing or not opposing. It depends on the game. So whether these interests are opposed or these interests are partially opposed, it depends on the game. Means in both the scenarios, it will depend on the game. So when the result of the both the scenarios is same, you go with whether and or. Psychologically, most interesting situations dash when the interests of the players are partly coincident and partially, partly opposed. Situations is plural. We need a verb without S. Let's eliminate anything which is with S. So occurs cannot be the answer. So most interesting situations happen, exist or arise. Arise is right because when you are playing in between while you are playing, there are new situations which come up. Come up means arise. Situations arise. Situations don't happen. Happen is more for like accidents happen or um, 
we use happen and occur in the case of uh, natural disasters as well tsunamis earthquakes they occur natural resource natural uh, disasters generally go with occurring and the same way we use the word happen as well but situations arise then they say each because then one can postulate not only a conflict among the players but also inner conflicts within the players each is torn dash a tendency to cooperate and a tendency to tendency to compete so i am not reading the comma to comma part to simplify the sentence each is torn dash this tendency and that tendency so whenever there are two things we go with between between this tendency and dash tendency so as to dash his own individual interests so it two comes first form of verb and we are talking about players here his means players and we are talking about game so each player is between two tendencies either to cooperate or to compete so as to dash his own interest so when we are playing general game like carrom board or ludo either we compete with each other or we cooperate with each other why do we do that the end result is the same we all want to win right so as to dash our own interest so as to enhance means increase our chances of winning enhance means increase and individual interest means your chance your individual chance of winning so you don't um, establish is used for set we did establish yesterday establish was used with goals set the goal establish the goal set a target establish a target develop we don't de de interest is already there so we don't develop it uh, between two tendencies so we are between two tendencies because we want to increase our interest of winning so enhance is the right answer here <clears throat> right so these are the answers the first one we can when we are selecting from the options we can go with among in that case if you have out of and among both go with among in that case it's more academic the second one the noun is singular totality is the noun so we need a verb with s and the to total of our choices totality means total only the total of our choices determine the outcome means outcome will depend on the total choices so it will be determined whether and or because the result is the same um then situations it's better to go with the verb arise situations come up situations arise um the fourth one two things so we'll go with between and the last one why do we cooperate or compete in a game to win to increase our chances of winning to increase our individual interests what does meaning of torn here i'm not exactly sure because i didn't even try to think on that but if we try to then torn would be you you are um, stuck in a situation between this and that so sometimes you have to go with one option sometimes you have to go with the other option so that can mean torn here but it doesn't really matter <coughs> is it fine so whether an or are used oh yeah when the result is the same whether this or that the result will remain the same that is when we use whether and or either an or is used when you have to make a choice between the two because the result will vary all right <clears throat> so here you have your first question for reorders on the screen you have 2 minutes to post your answers please do reorders carefully today
very well done good attempt so the first sentence is c my aim is to present a conception of justice which generalizes and carries to a higher level of abstraction the familiar theory of the social contract there were clear hints in this one first of all we said that in order to do this so this means you you should talk about something that you can do first of all so that is why it comes after the c sentence that in order to do this means in order to reach to this aim we are not to think of original contract as one to enter a particular society or a particular form of government rather the idea is that so how to use rather rather always connects negative and positive sentences so before rather should be a sentence which includes no and after rather should be a sentence which includes yes to be to uh, keep an example in your mind you can say i do not want to go to australia rather i am planning to move to canada so before rather there is a no sentence negative sentence and after rather is the positive side positive or the opposite side of it so here rather is connecting the idea is not this rather the idea is this so this is how rather connect sentences and then you are left with only one sentence here you say the idea is that the principles of justice and here you say they are the principles so first you will say which principles principles of justice and only then they, you can say they are the principles they means the principles of justice <clears throat> lot of you have done uh, all correct very good very well done so the day you will start solving your reorders based on this that these those and connectors more than enough to get 60 70% easily just on these two three things okay here you have your second question Two minutes for this, and then post your answers.
This was again a very easy question. I don't know why you're messing it up. Here you have the full name Frank Whittel and here you have only Whittel and a lot of you are putting D before A. Open your eyes, guys. The first sentence is A, the invention of gas turbine by Frank Whittle in England and Hans von Owen in Germany in 1939 signaled the beginning of jet transport. This is your topic. This is where you are introducing that what have you invented? What is the topic? Why are we talking about engines and flights and this and that? So the first sentence was, this is your topic, invention of gas turbines by these two people. And I have told you multiple times that the second sentence further explains the first sentence. Because first sentence will just tell you, okay, gas, the invention of gas turbine is the topic. Explain it further, who did it, when they did it, or what is the story behind this invention, which is given in D. They said that although the French engineer, this person had visualized the concept of jet propulsion more than 25 years earlier, it took improved materials and the genius of Whittle and Owen to recognize. So what these people have exactly done? They have recognized the advantages that a gas turbine offered over a piston engine, including speeds in excess of 350 miles per hour. So this is what they have done. This is their contribution. So first explain the first sentence and only then move ahead. Then it was just based on the timeline. First you have 39, 47 and then 50. <clears throat> Nothing more than this. So full name and half name was one and then timeline was one. Then even after that, you have to explain the topic. So A and then explanation B. Even if you don't go with this full name first and then the part of the names. This is also in the rules that you have been taught in your strategy classes. Should have been correct. This was an easy one. Okay, third question, two minutes and then we'll start with reading blanks.
Okay, let's discuss. The first one was B because it is the broadest sentence. It says opium wars, two armed conflicts in China in the mid 19th century between the forces of Western countries and of Qing dynasty, which ruled China from this to this. Now, this is the broadest one because this tells you that the wars were between Western countries. Western countries is broader than naming one country. A lot of you have written C before B. How can you say Britain first and then you say Western countries? Western countries means all of the and any of the Western countries and Britain is just one example of a country. <coughs> Never forget the broader to the specific rule. So here we say that the opium wars, these were two conflicts that were between China and Western countries. And then you explain them one by one. The first war was between China and Britain and the second and tells us that you have to continue this. And the second opium war also known as was fought by Britain and France against China. So now we are naming the countries one by one. And then there are two sentences. One of them says in each case. So in each case will obviously come when you have talked about two cases. So say first war, second war, in each case. Each means in both the cases. So it has to come. It cannot have a sentence in between where you talked about one war and two war. The each case has to come after that. In each case, the foreign powers were victorious and gained commercial privileges and concessions in China. And then whatever you're left with, the conflicts mark the start of unequal treaties and this and that. What were the repercussions of the conflicts? It's a completely different story. So the related uh, sentences should always come first. Broader to narrow is something important to remember. And then in each case means, if you say um, in question one, you need to solve this in question two. You need to solve this in each of the questions. Means both the mentioned above is called in each of the questions. So this today the reorders were very easy. Should have got them correct. <clears throat> so let's begin with reading blanks. Two minutes to solve this question. And then post your answers, please.
Anybody like to post the answer? Good, very well attempted. So this says living organisms are unique in that they can extract energy from their environments and use it to dash activities such as movement, growth and development and reproduction. So we do comes first form of verb, any verb that we can use for the noun activities. And yes, all of you are right in selecting carry out. Carry out means perform, carry out means do the activities. So any of the options, even if you have perform, you can go with that. Carry out activities, but how do living organisms dash energy from their environment? So this was the topic itself that they were talking about extracting energy. So we'll go with the same, but how do they extract energy? So it's not receive because receive is you're sitting and somebody is get, giving it to you. So you are receiver, but extracting means you are making the effort to get it out. So how are they able to extract energy from their environment and how do cells use this energy to synthesize and assemble the dash from which the cells are made? So though comes with a noun, assemble what? What is a noun that can be assembled? We had two nouns here, items or components. What better goes with assembling is components because components means parts of something that we can assemble means we can put in order. So that would be assembling going with components over items because items is a general noun. Hundreds of coordinated multi-step reactions fueled by energy obtained dash nutrients. So we get, with the verb obtain, we generally use obtain from together because obtain from comes with the source, means what is the source? Nutrients is the source from which the energy is obtained. Ultimately convert available materials into molecules required. The sentence is complete. Ultimately convert what kind of available materials? So anything that can describe available materials. And we generally use readily available with readily available foods, ready to eat kind of. So readily available materials means easily available things that are easily available. They take those things and then convert them into the molecules required. So very good attempt. Any confusions, anybody still? All right, so here you have your second question on the screen. Two minutes to post your answers for this one.
very well done some of you have not understood the last sentence so this is even though intermediate technology solutions are generally dashed with relatively basic devices so with r comes third form of verb you can always eliminate ly options and that word should match with the word with as well we had two uh, past forms of verbs associated and related out of which related comes with two and associated is the answer because associated comes with the word with always so solutions are associated with relatively basic devices made out of old machine parts cloth or wood sentence is complete we just need an adverb because made is the verb and when we look at the options we had only one adverb which was often otherwise generally the words that end with ly are adverbs but out of the apart from the ly options o f t e n often is also an adverb t o o is also an adverb s o o n soon is also an adverb v e r y very is also almost at least this is also a list of adverbs that you should be having with yourself so often made out of these things such as energy dash bulbs solar powered light bulbs or small adsorption pot in pot refrigerators energy efficient bulbs is a very common thing um, we also have energy saving so what the both of them are absolutely same but saving is a general word efficient is more academic energy saving devices energy efficient devices the meaning is same but efficient should be preferred over saving if you have it in the options and then they say that large scale more expensive solutions such as modern industrial factories to press waste parts of banana plants and stalks of other harvested crops into fiber board may also be reasonable in some areas since farmers whose stalks dash otherwise have gone to waste could dash by using the fiber board so the only thing which was very easy which which could have helped you to understand is have gone otherwise have gone so otherwise have gone means this thing did not go there but the if the next mentioned thing has not happened then there was no choice so here the answer is farmers whose stocks would have gone would means it's not a possibility some of you have selected could here could means possibility so when you say otherwise then the writing style means you don't have a choice here this was the only uh, thing going to happen otherwise so farmers whose stocks would otherwise have gone to waste means they did not have a choice they have to throw them to waste but now these farmers could dash by using the fiber board but now with could comes first form of verb and we have only one benefit these farmers could benefit by using the fiber board otherwise they would have gone to waste so this is how we write uh, the otherwise word when you don't have a choice if the next mentioned thing has not happened then otherwise it would have gone to waste because would shows definitely something that would have definitely happened there's no option that we had right so these are the answers any confusions anybody associated comes with with often is the only adverb we have energy saving or efficient means the same but efficient is more academic the fourth one would otherwise because there's no choice this definitely would have happened but now the farmers could benefit by using the fiber board so otherwise means if the next mention thing has not happened listen zoya i have repeated this three times now energy saving energy efficient both of them means the same efficiency is more academic than writing the word saving any confusion anybody still all right so here is your question number 3 and 2 minutes to put your answers for this one
do we want to make the future neutral neutral means no good no bad you don't need even good things in the future <clears throat> the future is unwritten it is also right dash the corner so it's a phrase around the corner which means approaching like we say christmas is around the corner uh, any festival anything that you are looking forward to we say it's around the corner when it is about to approach and if as science fiction author has noted it is not evenly distributed more and more young people around the world are reaching toward it to shape it improve it and make it more dash what is the sentence saying it is not evenly distributed that means people are trying to make it evenly distributed which means equitable so we want future to bring prosperity to everybody we don't want only few people to benefit and few people to suffer we want equality equitable uh, equal distribution of things in the future these shapers of the future work in many dash and endeavors and they have given examples also medicine technology business so these can be many fields we have two plural nouns here with many obviously we need a plural noun there was factors and fields so science and technology medicine business are fields they are not factors so we'll go with fields they are people of ideas dash the intellectual questions and concerns that will guide future thought so questions are framed so that is why we'll go with framing the questions means these are the people who are framing the questions that will guide future thought who are these people these are scholars builders designers architects artists and social leaders dash under the age of 40 the 200 shapers of the future that we will highlight in this series have already left their mark on the present and we expect to see much more invention so we have despite and why till now you all of you should be knowing the use of despite is when you have contrast in the sentence there is no contrast it's a completely positive sentence so it's better to go with while while here actually means <coughs> being under the age of 40 means they they just want to say that these are not very older aged people these are just around uh, uh, less than the age of 40 and they have done so much for the Uh, future already they have already left their mark so there's nothing positive and negative and unless and until we have a contrast we cannot go with despite right so good attempt any confusions anybody here around the corner is a phrase and based on the language that it is not evenly distributed so we have to go with equitable because that's the topic it's not about neutrality it's about even distribution which is equitability many fields because the examples are given and questions are framed and despite cannot come because there is no contrast in the sentence it's a completely positive sentence so we can go with while which here means being under the age of 40 is it clear with all of you and the last question for today 2 minutes and post your answers for this
All right, should be done. Post your answers. Good, well done. STEM education experiences are made dash in a variety of settings. And yes, are made available. We generally put made and available together by schools and community organizations as a way of dash a diverse STEM workforce. So after off, we use ING form of verb as a way of, and there's only one ING form of verb. So no choice, no confusion way of um, fostering a diverse workforce otherwise the meaning of fostering is encouraging something educators focused on improving science and mathematics instruction employed several dash to k to 12 stem education so after several comes the plural noun and something that educators can employ employ means they can include they can apply so what can educators apply in the education system we can have different approaches. Approaches can be different methods, different strategies in the education system. For example, some teachers integrated project-based activities that demanded knowledge and skill application in specific areas such as engineering. In dash instances, plural is what we need. So we can say in some instances, it can be in some cases. <clears throat> And then students were also given dash to spend time with professionals in STEM fields. So what can we give to students? Options or opportunities. So whenever there is something positive, it's better to go with opportunities over options. Students were given opportunities because it's going to benefit them. It's nothing negative in it. So we'll go with opportunities, not an option. Option is more like choice, whether they want to or they don't want to. <clears throat> so that's why it should be opportunities. Any confusions, anyone in this question? The first one is made available. Second, after off comes ing form of verb. And after several, we need a plural noun, something that people can put into education systems. So there can be different approaches, different methods in the education system. In some instances, a very we just have to fill a common blank. And students were given opportunities because it's a good platform for them to uh, meet professionals. So that would be opportunity for them. Any questions or confusions, anybody before we wind up? So these were all the questions that we had to do today. And I hope you would have noted down the things you are learning, you are writing so that you can be revising later on. <clears throat> Okay, so before we leave, as I uh, told you yesterday, most probably we will be having a class tomorrow and the message for the same will be uploaded on the Facebook page as well as in your WhatsApp groups. So please keep an eye for the message. 90% it is a yes that we will be having a class tomorrow uh, to compensate for the Monday and Tuesday's leave. Right? So I'll see you all tomorrow at the same time, 6.30 p.m. according to Sydney timing. Please do come back, keep practicing, keep revising, and um, keep analyzing that what are your weak points, what are your weak areas. And we will be working on them together. So Zoya, if you are our online student, that you then you must be in one of the WhatsApp groups, so you will get the notification there. The Facebook group is, uh, I think, for the on-campus students who are in Australia. <laughs> right? So, bye-bye. Take care. And let's wait for the next meeting, hopefully tomorrow. Take care of yourself, guys. <laughs>